Read it. Aw, she's little again. And tired. Okay, so we're flashing back to that performance she saw of that Kosei gave when she was little. Right, can we get a look a little? Ooh. Okay, we have the synesthesia. Does she have synesthesia? Because was she the one where... I think... I kind of like this remix. The extra drums and it sounds like a guitar that's in there. With like a little synthesizer thing on top there. Mm-hmm. Even they were a little derps at one time. I like that the show's touching on that. That's something that... I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> that a lot of people just take for granted that people have always been able to. That there wasn't a day one. And I like that the piano teacher explicitly said that. Boom. Okay, so I said I like the remix. I don't know how I feel about this. Now it sounds like the remix is overtaking. <laughs> okay, now the piano's back. To the four. Nice. I... I don't know. I think I initially felt that Takashi... With his obsession, I don't know, it kind of felt like he was the one who had more... Would, might have more depth of the two, but, um... I really, for as little as we know about her, for her backstory at least, I really like Emmy. I think I understand her a lot more. Like she said, um, in the last episode, she wants Kose... she wants... Kose made her feel something. And she wanted to be like that to make someone feel something. And then, like she said, she didn't like how, how Kosei's mom was treating him um, and how he's being raised as a musician. How she didn't, I guess, that kind of feeling she wasn't getting from his playing anymore. Which is why she like wanted to challenge him to, she'd make him feel his emotions as in like response for wanting him to get back to that. I think that was the kind of the gist of like what she was talking about in the last episode. And just elaborating on that, she wants to have feelings from the playing just like Kosei did. Um, and when it's just all that, it's very good, complicated, yet very well presented things. And Takashi's got, like, ended up just being like, oh, I want to do that or whatever, and I got a compliment, oh, okay, I'm happy now. So, um, oh, I'm Jophonium, my name is Joe, and I play the Euphonium, um, and piano too. But yeah, I really like Emmy. Oh, shut up. It's like all the non-main character... Not even, it's like everyone, every male except Kosei is like, that's the only thing they can think of. I like the little gray out they just did with the other colors. Except the red dress. <laughs> How medicated are these pianists? Or, oh, okay, never mind. Another little hinting at things not being all well there. It's not just a little anemia or whatever she tried to lie about in there. See, see. You know, you know, Watcher is like all these noisy bros who are like out yelling outside of my apartment right now. That's that's 
That's where I put. That's where I place you. That's where I place you. They're artists. We're all artists. And that level is, you know, the playing is an expression of you. Or should be. Now the cat thing's just... Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah, remember happy things. Why does he look bruised, though? Well, I mean, I know they set it how they set it up, but... I guess I was hoping it wouldn't include that. Unless it was from the cat. Hope it was from the cat and not from mom. <sighs> this show likes to knows when to just turn it and just go total dark. I see the thematic thing with the pills now. Just like Kauri. That, that, that's the real harm in all of this. Children instinctively love their parents and want to help them, however they think that they can't, however they think that they can. What it can do to a kid, you know, I'll get first place as long as it helps you get better. I mean, thank goodness this is fiction, you know, but in real life, that can really warp a kid. Mess them up. Yeah. But does that create any creativity or any of the soul? And that's... This woman is awful. You know, that's the most sensitive thing you've ever said in this show, Waterine. It came when from when you were like eight. Yeah, it's... Because kids will believe that. Well, at least they're hammering it this home. Just, I, I don't think I have to explain it that much. I think it c is conveyed well by the show itself. <laughs> yep, those were... <laughs> yes, do that. And that's the payoff with the blood. Get stepping, just just stepping away from. Yeah, just stepping away from the obvious horror that is this woman's treatment. Yeah, exactly. You know, the show doesn't need to show blood on the kid's face that much. We've already gotten used to that, so now just even the hint of that can communicate to us as the audience just the severity of what's happened to him. Just from showing all that, all, the, all those head injuries the other times, even comedic moments. And then, obviously, she eventually did. Which only layers the guilt even more. 
it's tough watching this knowing psychology and stuff of and development of development of children. Either he internalizes and belie fully believes it, or out of survival has to take a stance against it, which he just did. And that's a terribly abusive thing to warp a kid's mind to have to go down those, one of those two roads. This really is a big payoff episode, huh? Because we've just pulled from like four or five different elements of the show. Moments and other elements of the show now. <laughs> That's cool, putting the score in the spotlight there. Just like Nodame just had that cool moment there, um, this show is... I'm not upset, I'm just flabbergasted just how fast that went. Um, but anyway, this show also is very good with its depictions and just its creativity. I mean, it's someone playing the piano, there's only so many things visually you can do with just that. So it goes with the, the notes, the, the little flower petals, the spotlight showing the music, underwater. And yeah, someone messing up on whatever. They... It's very artistic with that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it... stepping away from the music, which we obviously didn't do too much of, but I'm not upset about. Um, a lot of payoff. Yeah, they, we had, you know... All those uses of the blood in previous episodes were developed into something where they were just an element, but an important element that we, as the audience, having already become familiar with that, um, just even that little drop of blood was enough to convey that's what was happening there. We didn't have to have a big shocking image of that. Um, rather, the big shopping, shocking image was of his exact expression, so we could go a level deeper. Um, and I can see we're continue, only continuing with this. Um... Payoff with that. We have the payoff with Emmy, further development of her little backstory with Kosei as a little kid there as to why she is how she is. Um, in terms of like she wants to get the emotion out of it. A little more development with Kaori and also a parallel being made between Kaori's condition and Kosei's mother with the whole pills, um, a bunch of medications and everything as you know, direct visual references to each other. Um, what else we had? We had, um, well, yeah, we had development, you know, all the little hintings we'd gotten at Kosei's mother's treatment of him, full on, full display of, well, first we were hinted at with the bruising and then confirmed with that big scene. Um, and then, oh, there's gotta be a fifth one. Come on, I can pull out a fifth one. Um, we could say that, I'll think of it. But anyway, um, yeah, just... Dramatically, a very nice big payoff with all so many things that have been built up in this show so far. Um, which dramatically was very, very smart how they built all these things up. Like I said, like uh, just using the blood as an example, you know, we become so familiar with this as an audience that it can be taken a step further. Um, you know, we could have, you know, gone straight to say like Kosei's mom was um, beating him and whatnot earlier, but no, we hinted at it, so when we see it actually in action, we can go a little further with like what exactly she's saying, the messages she's communicating with him, and then his response, rather than just inundate the audience with everything all at once there. Which for the all the flack that I've given this show with um, holding back things and hyping them up and wait, making us wait, it is very purposeful. Um, Dramatically, in a dramatic narrative sense. Yeah, it's very purposeful and maximizes the impact of episodes like this. So, I'm excited for episode 11. I'm actually just going to go record it right now. You'll notice I'm wearing the same shirt in the next one. So, I'm Joe Phonium. My name is Joe, and I play the Euphonium. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Your Lie in April. See ya! Happy playing! playing.